This can be a turn one. Can we win immediately? Okay, dredge five and dredge six. Great. And now we'll dredge six again. Yeah, we have double ox there. Ox walk is an even dredge return. Yes, yeah, this will be a turn one win, I, I suppose. <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. This is Mafus Van Gogh, your dredge guy. Today we are back to Turbo Dredge. Uh, this is my 3.1 version of the deck. Uh, after playtest, uh, lots of variances with Lotus Petal in the deck. I decided that uh, maybe Lotus Petal doesn't belong to this. I know this may sound strange because this is a turbo deck. We want to be fast and Lotus Petal is really good in uh, other decks that want to be uh, faster. Uh, but uh, after Doing some play testing with uh, Lotus Petal, I tried 4, 3, 2, and 1 copy. And in the end, I decided that we want to have more enablers and persistent mana, including mountains, uh, to really have those uh, turbo kill combos uh, with this deck. So Lotus Petal seems like a good addition to the deck, maybe 1 copy, but in the end, I decided to uh, try uh, 14 lands instead. And I'm going to play the Legacy Challenge. We uh, I didn't play challenges in the last... Uh, month after modern horizons release i didn't play a single legacy challenge this would be my second i played yesterday's legacy challenge and i did a good result i did a fortune result uh, good for a uh, 16th uh, position 16th place uh, but today we are try to do those minor changes compared to what i played yesterday so no lotus petal uh two breakthrough instead of three and three otherworldly gaze instead of two <laughs> and this is because other otherworldly gaze is amazing in this deck uh, at some moments and breakthrough is the most all-in card that we have and i'm not sure if we want to have three or four copies i tried i played with four i tested four copies i tested three copies and in the end i decided that uh, this is a deck that wants only two copies of breakthrough what else burning inquiry i think this card is uh probably the most powerful turn one enabler of all time for dredge or madness or similar strategies but uh it's randomness it's something that can scare uh some players uh but uh in this build, combined with uh, Lion's Eye Diamond or other cards that we can play before Burning Inquiry, I think this can be really good. We can, for example, uh, starting the game playing casting Otherworldly Gaze or Faithless Looting, and then casting LED and Burning Inquiry on turn 2, or maybe Breakthrough, or maybe both, if we have 2 mana. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, this can be a good card. I, I'm feeling uh, something good from this <laughs> after testing this in Modern this week. And now I'm playing this in Legacy, and I feel this card uh, also belongs to this strategy. And since we have more red enablers, now we can have more uh, red. Our mana base is uh, leaning towards red instead of blue. Of course, we have four copies of Cephalic Elysium, but this is almost all the time an enabler that sometimes also uh, happens to be a land, a mana. But uh, all of our other lands can produce or go after red mana. Uh, especially our basic mountain. So if we have a land, for example, with Faithless Looting, Burning Inquiry, uh, LED, and maybe two copies of Looting, we can go after a uh, basic mountain instead of other mana if we are playing against a Wasteland deck. And this will guarantee that we can uh, win with hasty creatures because we have Anger in our deck. And we are going to find Anger because we have two copies of Ox of Gunners and one copy of Dread Return. Uh, and this list is so focused on a fast plan that we usually will reveal or single copies, three copies of Bridge from Below instead of the traditional four. We have to make room for other uh, things here. It's better to have three copies of Poxwalkers, for example, instead of four copies of Bridge in this list. This is something that I truly believe it is correct. But I can see some players uh, looking at uh, only three copies of Bridge and uh, having some doubts about it. Uh, maybe if you want to really rely on Bridge from Below uh, and uh, not so turbo plan, you can have four copies of Bridge and maybe you can take uh, one Poxwalkers from your deck or maybe one Ox. Uh, yeah, this is something that I can still test in the future because, well, this is a new list. I'm already talking about this list on my Patreon. If you are not there, you should. <laughs> I'll uh, leave uh, here. I'll put my, the link to my Patreon here on the comments below. Uh, and yeah, let's do the gameplay because the Legacy Challenge will start in a couple of minutes. Oh, and about our sideboard. Uh, we have four copies of the Line of Sanctity, four copies of the Line of the Void. Since we want to have our best answers on turn zero, it, it makes sense to have Ley Lines instead of other cards uh, like uh, Forces. We don't have that many blue cards, but we could. Uh, Grief is also a good card, but uh, in the end I decided to have uh, the full play set of both Ley Lines. And four Bounce Spells, mostly for Ley Line of the Void, but we can also include uh, Bounce Spells for other decks if needed. Uh, one Icarid for Grindier uh, matchups. 
and one Ancient Rider as, as be our best removal spell for some of the permanents that uh, can deal with our deck. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoy. Click the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Uh, let's play some competitive magic today. Uh, I'll play the, to, uh, the Sunday's Legacy Challenge. Let's go. Renting cards is the best way to play online, and you can start your journey, like me, on Mana Traders. Just use this coupon code that you can see here on this page to have an exclusive discount on your first two months. Now, let's go back to the games. All right, round one. We are, oh, we are against True Hero. And this is already a mulligan. This hand is better. We keep. We are on the draw. Uh, so on the draw, I think Ox is expendable. Let's put it on the bottom. And my opponent starts with a scouting turn. Exit. This is a tempo deck, maybe. Volcanic. And Delver. Okay. This is Delver. Maybe Blue Red. Maybe Grixis. We draw. We did Foothills. Uh, let's. Since we have other uh, lands here, I'll try to put uh, this seed into my opponent's head that make. Maybe Wasteland is good here. It isn't, but uh, maybe my opponent think it is. Let's cast uh, Faithless Looting instead of... Okay, my opponent has days. Next turn we can try this again. I could go for uh, Badlands and Cabal Therapy. This would be another uh, possible play. Targeting me, for example. Okay, my opponent has Wasteland. And uh, he will target my Volcanic Island. Delver attacks. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice, guys. I'm recovering from a uh, uh, hard uh, week with a uh, flu. Now I cast Faithless Looting. Okay, it resolves. Let's discard Stinkweed Imp and Poxwalkers. And now we can pass a turn. We have double Cephalic Odysseum and even Burning Inquiry. So I think we are good. My opponent's Delver is a good Delver. is not flipping. And my opponent replays Volcanic Island here and attacks, dealing one damage. And Cephalic Odysseum is uncounterable. This will be my choice for this turn. So let's stretch first. Okay, we have Dredger there. We have Golgari Crypto and Golgari Thug. So let's crack Cephalic Odysseum here. We'll Dredge 6 and Dredge 5. And Dredge 5 again. We have double Narco, Pox, Walker's Bridge. Uh, one Cabal Therapy is already there. We can discard the second one and two Dredgers. And now, unless my opponent, my opponent can. Even if they have Lightning Bolt here to exile our bridges, since we have Pox Walkers, this is already a win. So let's uh, cast our therapy. Let's order those triggers. It doesn't matter, actually. Putting Bridge uh, on top of the pile force your opponent to have an attitude. And he, yeah, my opponent is casting Lightning Bolt, targeting Delver. This is something that Delver players usually do, because Bridge is one of the best cards. I think we'll name only Days here. Yeah, they have Days, because uh, Bridge is one of the best cards again uh, in our entire deck. But uh, Turbo Dredge has so many other threats that uh, this is usually not the best plan. So let's cast that Dredge Return here, <clears throat> targeting Ox. Ox enters the battlefield, and my opponent concedes. Ooh. Okay, this was a fast uh, game one as it should be, because we're playing Dredge. And now let's go to the sideboard. I'm not sure if my opponent is playing a Grixis list or a blue-red list. It is probably Grixis, because everyone is on Psychic Prog these days, but uh, I don't think Anger is that needed, especially on the draw. Let's include a, an Acorid instead. Anger is a great card, but uh, this is a Wasteland matchup, and uh, especially on the draw, I don't think we need Anger. I prefer to have more threats. But this can be wrong, of course. Uh, I'm not sure about what my opponent will play against our deck. Maybe he will play Graph Digger's Cage. In this case, Ikorid is not that good. Anger would be better. Uh, maybe they play with Surgical. Maybe Unlicensed Hearse. Oh, this is a uh, scary keep because my opponent can have uh, can have forces or Surgicals. This folds to Surgical Extraction. But this is a turn 1. My opponent kept 7. Let's skip this too. And maybe we can start with a single Burning Inquiry and LED, but without cracking LED. My opponent plays with Bubble. This is what, what's on top of our deck. Plays underground. Oh, Cage. Okay, we don't have answers to Cage playing in this deck. Uh, I will not play bounce spells that can be countered, and my opponent can only replay Cage. So, uh, LED is not uh, good in this situation, so let's uh, cast our first Burning spell. Okay, my opponent is thinking, and yeah, okay. He decided to counter Burning Inquiry. And now he's passing... Uh, I'm passing the turn to him. He plays Volcanic Island and Delver. Leaving red mana open. And our only chance here is if this Delver never flips and we can start uh, casting Stinkwind Imps. Or even if this Delver flips, we can have blockers forever here. Uh, I think we need to go for more lands. I will guarantee that I have bad lands here. And I will even play LED because LED can help us to, to pay for dazes in the future. Okay, my opponent will counter my Burning Inquiry. And now Delver. Will finally flip? No? Okay, good Delver, good Delver. 
Uh, okay, a second Delver. Now it's getting scary. My opponent doesn't have any more cards in uh, his hand. And, uh, okay, my opponent had a double Force of Field, double, a double Delver, and Graph Digger's Cage. Let's just play this Golgari Thug. Hopefully this Delver will stay there. Oh, no. Yeah, okay, yeah, and it's revealing to Daisy. So, yeah, LED has a, has a function here. So let's draw a land, shall we? Oh, yeah, a land. And you can even pay for days cracking LED if we need it. So let's crack Bloodstain Mire here. Or a volcanic. Uh, could, I could cast Poxwalkers first, maybe? Just to have a... a... No, I, I think it's safer to just uh, cast Stinkwood Imp here. Because my opponent can have Lightning Bolt soon. Yeah, let's just play Stinkwood Imp. And if my opponent dazes it, I'll just crack LED. Okay, my opponent fires days, and I'll crack LED for white mana. Why not? <laughs> I'll pay one white mana to keep my Imp in play. And now let's attack, right? With our Golgari Thug. And since we have Dredgers in our graveyard, those Dredgers can uh, reveal uh, more Stinkwood Imps. So this is a game plan. <clears throat> <coughs> I'm sorry. Now my opponent will not attack? Okay, great. We are holding. Uh, let's Dredge 6. Okay, we found another Stinkwood Imp for next turn. I will attack with the Golgari Thug here. Let's test my opponent's reflexes here. Because if they block, I can put uh, Oxwalkers on top. And I can... Take Poxwalkers back next turn. Yeah, my opponent will block. So I can put uh, Poxwalkers on top. I'm not sure if this is wise at this point of the game. Maybe it would be better to guarantee uh, my second Stink with him first. Thinking about that, if my opponent have uh, more threats in the future, maybe it would be better to just... Okay, this will put my opponent into a fence. So let's block one of our opponent's Delvers. Yeah, it all depends about what my opponent will draw here. Okay, nothing. So let's draw our Poxwalkers. Okay, let's cast it. And we pass. And my opponent, hopefully nothing too scary. Oh, Brainstorm is good here. No other Delvers, no Darcy's, please. Just uh, counter spells or something like that. No, no, no counter spells. Actually, I don't want my opponent to have counter spells here. Okay, they have a, a second threat. So now I must dredge, and I will play Stinkwood Imp. And this is what I was talking about. Uh, maybe I, I just uh, pushed uh, our options here. Maybe Poxwalkers would be better on the future, not uh, now. If we had two Stinkwood Imps in play now, uh, we could win this game, almost guaranteed. But now maybe it is not so easy. My opponent will attack with Delver Psychic Frog, I'll block. It's better to block Psychic Frog here because it represents the same amount of damage and it draws cards. Okay, my opponent discarded one card to kill Stinkwood Imp. Psychic Frog also... Oh, my opponent has a second one. Okay, so there's nothing we can do here, right? I can dredge, I can draw, I'll draw. The Father Coliseum is a good draw, but uh, it doesn't matter now. <laughs> I, I'm just uh, cracking Cephalic Elysium in, in Delusion here. We don't, we don't have other, other ways to win this game anymore. Not against true flying threats. So you see, it would be better to just uh, have uh, both Stinkwood Imps, maybe three Stinkwee, Stinkies, or maybe even four, and then start attacking with Poxwalkers, Golgari Thugs. So I, w I rushed things. It, it is on me. This game could be ours. It is on me. Uh, let's try to do better on game three. Uh, I think we don't want Ikorid and want e Anger back. And that's all. We will go to our pre-boarded deck. Since tempo strategies are so frequent, frequent in Legacy, uh, the deck is always pre-boarded for tempo decks. So now we are on the play, and this is different. Okay, this can be really good. Let's skip and let's see what our opponent does. I can even cast a, a Cabal Therapy on my first turn here. A Blind Cabal Therapy. My opponent gets 7. I can aim Force of Will. Let's let's test my opponent's hand with LED. And now I'll crack Scouting Turn for... I, I was saying Blood Crypt here. This is not modern. Uh, Badlands. And now let's cast this Cabal Therapy blindly. I'll name Graph Digger's Cage here. My opponent let me resolve LED. Graph Digger's Cage. Oh, they had a Force and they decided not to use it. And now we can win this game. My opponent has a single Wasteland. Okay, so my opponent plays Wasteland. And destroy my Badlands. But we have a second land and all the worldly gates. We draw Breakthrough, it is good. We don't have basic islands in this build anymore, so I'll, I'll crack on my opponent's upkeep here, just to dodge Force of Negation, Volcanic Island. And let's see if my opponent wants to spend uh, his Force of Will. No? Okay, everything to the bin. We want lands here, lands and treasures. So we have an Arkhamweba, and we have Bridge and Cabal Therapy, so we can even cast a Cabal Therapy next turn targeting my opponent. Hopefully they will not find a land or Graph Digger's Cage, a second Graph Digger's Cage. No lands. Great. Now we, oh, we found our second land. This is really good because now let's decide here. I have some options. I think I will start with Cabal Therapy targeting my opponent. But I can also just cast a breakthrough with X equals to 1. But since I want to resolve things, let's attack first. Because I don't think I, 
I think I will attack first. I don't. I don't think even with anger in my in my deck, I don't think we have the win this turn. My opponent has double counter spells, so two counter spells. So now we attack with Nicol Muba, and now I'll cast Cabal Therapy to take their Force of Negation. Let's see if I can. Oh, they used Force of Negation, Exiling Days. Even better. They don't want to to reveal their hand to us. Okay, they have Psychic Frog and Force of Will, so they will counter whatever we do here. I think in this case I will just go with Otherworldly Gaze, and they will probably counter that. Oh, another Force of Negation. So they still have Force of Will, Dragon's Raid Channeler, and a third card. <clears throat> my opponent plays Volcanic Island and Darcy. So they have Force of Will and another card. Oh, can my opponent still win this? <laughs> Uh, okay, we have found our Dredger. But I don't think I will go all in here because my opponent can have another blue card there. It is scary to do this way, but I think it is better. I will not crack LED. Do you have another counterspell opponent? They don't. And we found a Looting, Cephalic Collision. We can play Cephalic Collision this turn. It is uncounterable. My opponent has Force of Will and another non blue card. So let's keep Cephalic Collision because we didn't play a land this turn. <clears throat> And I will play Cephalic Collision. I will crack LED for blue mana. And I will crack Cephalic Collision. Now, let's dredge. Our zombie already has haste. Dredge 6, dredge 5, and dredge 6. Okay, we don't have all the other all the keys. We didn't hit Narcomoeba or Cabal Therapy there. <laughs> That's unfortunate. This gives a window to my opponent. Yeah. I'm not sure if I even attack here because we have two bridges. And I want to preserve my bridges. So let's pass and hope for the best. Because our deck is already getting thin. And even if my opponent has a second wasteland here, I hope they don't, but uh, he don't. He doesn't. Uh, yeah, he plays uh, Mr. Ring Forest, Underground Sea. He also doesn't want to lose their creature. And they have Force of Fuel. So let's find a Cabal Therapy here. No? Okay, I will still cast Ox here, even if my opponent uh, counters it, because my Poxwalkers will enter the battlefield. And then we have Dredge Return. So yeah, this is probably our time to win this game, guys. Let's exile 8 cards. Yeah, 3 Poxwalkers enters the battlefield. My opponent will counter. But uh, yeah, that's the strong, uh, the strongness of this build. We have Poxwalkers and not so many Icorites. So Poxwalkers enters the battlefield. This is Turbo Dredging action, guys. Uh, this is deck building. Why we have uh, Poxwalkers in favor? We favor Poxwalkers instead of Icorites. Because of scenarios like this one. So now we get Ox of Agonas back. And our creatures already have haste. And this will be a lethal attack soon. Okay, my opponent knows that. And he considered the game. Oof. This was super good uh, because uh, True Hero is a, a well-known player from uh, a multi-champion format. Uh, so this was a strong win. Let's go to our second match soon. Okay, sorry guys. Uh, this is already a mulligan. Uh, and this is a good mulligan. I just uh, forgot to start recording on time. Uh, this is a great mulligan to six. We can just choose one land to put uh, back on the bottom. Uh, unfortunately, we are playing against uh, True Futurism, <laughs> and this guy uh, plays with uh, usually with Cloud Post decks. And Dredge has three really bad matchups. One of them is Cloud Post. The other two, if you want to know, uh, just answer me in the comments below, and I will tell you. We have great game against everything except for Cloud Post and two other decks that I can mention if someone asks me. Uh, so, uh, but this is a great hand. This could be even a turn one. <clears throat> My opponent kept six. Uh, he's also having uh, a mulligan. I'm not sure about what version of Cloudpost my opponent will play, if uh, he is indeed playing Cloudpost. I think I won against him uh, once when he was playing other deck that was not Cloudpost. So let's think here. I can go for a turn 1, or I can try a solid turn 2. And I think uh, this will be my choice here. Uh, because this is not a guaranteed turn 1, right? But it, it is a guaranteed turn 2. So let's start with Faithless Looting and see how my opponent will respond to that. It's fine. Oh, we have Breakthrough for next turn. So let's discard Grave Trouble and Dread Return. We will not reveal Anger yet. And I will play LED because my opponent can have Vexing Bubble. So let's play LED as soon as possible. I'm hiding Anger, but I'll not hide LED because of Bubble. And now we'll pass the turn. Let's see if we are dead. <laughs> if my opponent has... Uh... Okay, once upon a time. Lana Nexus. Okay, so my opponent wants... And Vexing Bubble. Okay. So... I'm not sure if my opponent plays cards like Endurance in the main deck, so this may indicate that we are good to go. So maybe we will just win game one? Can we? <laughs> Can we win game one against Cloudpost? We have Narcomweba here, we have Ox, which is amazing. We don't have other Dredger, so I need to go for I need to go for it. And since we have Ox there, I think I will ignore my Cephalic Elysium here. And I'll cast Breakthrough tapping Cephalic Elysium for mana. I think this is smarter. 
So I tap Cephalic Coliseum, blue mana, and I cast Breakthrough, hold priority, track it for red mana, because this allows me to play two Oxen if I want to. So Grave Troll, Dredge 6, we have Anger, yeah, and this would be important because we couldn't chain Dredgers even with 20 cards deep into our deck. So let's play Ox, Exile you, 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 and you. And Ox enters the battlefield. I think my opponent just pressed F6 here, I'm not sure. So we are probably winning this turn. So we dredge, dredge, dredge 18. Uh, I can cast about therapy targeting my opponent, sacrificing Ox. And this is the moment. If my opponent has something, uh, he must use this something <laughs> right now. If he doesn't, we will win the game. We already have hasty zombies. You never know, you never know. My opponent may play something weird like uh, Elvish Spirit Guide drop rotation. But I think uh, we are good to go here. So, casting Ox again. And let's win with style. Let's uh, dredge our entire deck here. No, let's, let's keep one card in case my opponent has something. Okay, we found all of our Narcos. And now I will cast Dredge Return, getting a huge Gogar Grief Troll, sacrificing two Pox Walkers and one Arkham Weaver. Three Pox Walkers enters the battlefield, and I have a multitude of zombies. And now, a uh, cup of therapy. It will be countered by the Vexing Bubble, but at least we have more zombies. Let's let's go into the end. <laughs> let's, uh, my opponent is letting me go, so uh, let's just build a huge zombie army. <laughs> okay, uh, let's cup of therapy here. And see, this is why I, I feel that we don't need four bridges to win the game. We usually are good with only three bridges. Okay, 25 creatures attacking my opponent, dealing a total of 50 points of damage. Seems reasonable. But this is one of our hardest uh, matchups, guys, so let's not feel overly confident. Uh, so I need answers to Leyline. And this is why this uh, matchup, let's take one Ox. This is why this matchup is so hard. We need to take a little bit of everything, one or the only case, because we need everything. Our opponent has Bujuka Bog and maybe other cards that target us. Uh, so Leyline of Sanctity would be, would be amazing. But my opponent also have Leyline of the Void. So we don't want to oversight boarding here because then we can just lose to uh, small Eldrazi's or something like that. We are not even sure if my opponent is playing Eldrazi yet, but uh, these days after Modern Horizons 3, let's take those five cards I think of the Wadley Gaze, Boxwalkers, yeah, and let's submit. Uh, after Modern Horizons 3, uh, every Cloud Post deck that I see uh, is uh, updated with uh, the Eldrazi package. Okay, my opponent is still sideboarding, let's wait a little bit. Now that I'm thinking, there is a consideration to include Ashen Rider and Dread Return. We don't have time to do this now, but uh, my opponent uh, will probably have other, other cards. You see, this is a, a situation that we, we need everything against Cloud Post because they can have cards like uh, Tabernacle or Glacial Chasm. And, or, of course, we can have turbo, turbo Hands, but if they have something like Glacial Chasm, we need to exile that uh, land. And even if we do, they can sometimes sacrifice it at instant speed and copy it to some other land. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's uh, stop complaining about this matchup. And let's try to win. Uh, this is unfortunately a mulligan, even on the draw, because we, don't, we have only 14 lands in our deck. This would be amazing if this Nakomiba was a land instead. We have an answer to ley line, a possible ley line, and we have a ways to uh, build our own graveyard. Okay, my opponent uh, decided to keep their hand, his hand. Uh, so we mulligan. This is also mulligan, unfortunately. Ooh, okay, so this hand, we need a land. If my opponent, my opponent kept a uh, seven, so maybe he kept a car, uh, a starting hand without uh, the land of the void. Uh, but I think we need to go to four. Okay, on four, this is this is what we got. Okay, we have one way to discard or break throws. Okay, my opponent doesn't have the line. That's great. Now we just want a single. Okay, once upon a time, we just need a single hand trip here. Kind of nexus. Okay. Oh no. Okay, this is the difference between being on the play and on the draw. Now we don't have ways to discard our Kogar Grid Trolls. That's unfortunate. And we didn't have good hands before that either. Okay, and then one ring. <laughs> of, of course, my opponent kept seven cards, so this makes sense. Uh, it's weird, but we can still win the, uh, this if my opponent... No, let's take Badlands here. If my opponent uh, doesn't uh, find good cards with the one ring, which is almost impossible. Okay, another Grave Troll is not what we want to see. Let's play land and pass. Now it's their turn. They take one damage from his own the one ring. And now he taps the one ring again. Okay, he plays just Cloud Post and Pass. So he kept a hand solely on the one ring, maybe. Okay, let's take a Volcanic Island, finding the deck, maybe finding an enabler that costs mana. Just another Volcanic, okay. 
I still I'm still playing this guys uh, and not before not because I think that I have a chance. I think I don't have a chance anymore. Uh, since turn two, I I'm sure that I don't have a chance. But this is what uh, we must learn uh, when playing competitive magic to be patient because I didn't so much. Oh, you see Elvish Spirit Guide, so now I know. Uh, we didn't so we didn't see much of my opponent's deck yet. So it is important here to since my opponent is not winning, he doesn't have a threat yet. So let's see how he will win this game. It is probably a similar list that I saw before, but it is important to be patient because this is a legacy challenge and my opponent can bring anything to the table. Okay, another plan on Nexus. Exile average spirit guide. So, okay, they will exile one of our lands. So now I know that my opponent plays this Drazi, but this was expected. I will still play for a couple a couple of turns to see more of my opponent's deck. Okay, now they, they probably has... Okay, another they won't ring, okay. It probably has cards like uh, Kozilek's Command, which is really good against our deck. They tap their... Uh, he... I, I'm sorry, I'm always uh, mixing they and he. Uh, so he is tapping the, uh, his uh, new The One Ring here. And now he needs to discard a card. We draw a useless Nakamueba. We can cast it, but you know what? I don't think I will even reveal Nakamueba <laughs> to my opponent here. I just want to stand a couple of turns more. Okay, my opponent taps the one ring, draws two more cards. Okay, this is the time. We'll see what else my opponent can... Okay, they have Leyline. Uh, this is what we wanted to see. So my opponent did uh, cast Leyline of the Void, and now we are sure that we need Leyline answers. Let's draw and probably concede here. Okay, we found an answer to Leyline, finally. Uh, but we don't have enablers. My opponent has an active the one ring and vexing bubble and seven cards in their hand, in his hand. And crop rotation, of course. Okay, my opponent now can search for a huge Eldrazi and win the game. He casts Kozilek's Command to ramp a little bit. The run ring deals damage, but uh, that is probably okay. Okay, now my opponent will search for an Eldrazi. He still didn't find a, an Eldrazi. Amazing. Naturally find an Eldrazi. Okay. Oh, okay. So he is going for the uh, disruption plan instead of going for a large Eldrazi. <laughs> I will tap Volcanic okay, Island for a blue mana. Yeah, and I will bounce your ley line of the void because I can. Let's put some fear into my opponent's head. <laughs> Take that ley line of the void. Now what? Oh, they have Veil of Summer. <laughs> uh, okay. He has Veil of Summer. And uh, yeah, this is the nail on the coffin. We can we can concede. Let's draw one more card before conceding. Yeah, just an Akumiba. Let's concede. Hopefully we will do better on game three on the play. And now I probably need to consider what I thought during our first sideboard time. Uh, Dredge Return and National Riders are probably needed in this matchup. Of course, we can bounce the line and go for a turn two if we have a great starting hand. But if this is not the case, we probably need to include those cards. Let's take all the worldly gaze. It is too slow here. Let's include Dredge Return. Let's take the basic mounting, I guess, because it doesn't cast uh, our bounce spells. And we always want blue mana in our starting hand now. And we didn't see Wasteland, right? Just the Eldrazi that can exile lands. So we are on the play, and yes, we would like to play first. Okay, this would be great if we had mana. So this is a mulligan. We could keep this and try to turn one without mana, but uh, it is... Oh, no mana again. It is almost impossible to win without uh, mana on turn one. We will need to, to have the most amazing dredgers, dredging. And my opponent cannot have anything on turn one like Crop Rotation, for example, and then we attack for the Thorn Turn 2. So it is better to keep hands with mana, and this is not. Okay, this is our best hand so far. It's not the great hand that we would like to have, but we have a Bounce Spell, and we have Land, and we have Breakthrough, which is a good uh, plan. Maybe we can draw something on Turn 2. Uh, so I think I'll keep those five here and put Oxwalkers and Cabal Therapy back. Yeah, and now my opponent has a Ley Line. Okay, this time we have an answer. I'm not sure if this will be fast enough, because my opponent kept 7 cards. So let's pass the turn here. My opponent doesn't have counter spells, so I can hold this chain of vapor until my opponent's end step. Oh, they have Glacial Chasm, so we invex in bubble. So we definitely needed a Dredge Return, Dredge Return Nation Rider. Let's see if we will have the chance to, to play both. Okay, we bounce line. Now, ideally, we want to draw something better than a Breakthrough to this. Okay, another Volcanic Island is actually a good draw. Because now we can cast the breakthrough with x equals to 1. And we can hold this Cephalic Coliseum for next turn in our hand. 
Okay, if my opponent kept uh, that card, that starting hand, because of Ley Line, we still have a chance here. But now my opponent saw Anger, so maybe he will be really smart here and just play Glacial, Glacial Chasm, because this Anger is really scary. Or maybe not, not everyone is expecting Anger for, from Dredge, right? Of course, my opponent saw this on game one. We already have Threshold, so we can crack Cephalic Codism next turn. My opponent is thinking deeply here. Okay, my opponent just plays Urza's Tower and Pass. They may activate Planar Nexus for green mana, so if they have crop rotation, this is probably over, but we cannot play around it. We must do what we want to do. Let's see if this Nakomi Bay enters the battlefield. It does. I'm so afraid of uh, doing it now. My opponent should have something extra here, right? Can we go for a different route? Because my opponent gave so many pauses here and there. So my opponent definitely has something. Do I play Cephalic Coliseum and then cast Cabal Therapy? Do I play Cabal Therapy first? I think I'll play Cabal Therapy first. Because my opponent can have a crop rotation or a Cozlex command. Oh, of course, my opponent... <laughs> I'm an idiot. Of course, my opponent has Vexing Bubble. I forgot about Vexing Bubble for a second. Okay, let's attack first here. I think I'll go for a slow road. Because I doubt that my opponent don't have a thing in their hand. So we attack for two. Okay, guys, uh, no regrets here. I, I will not crack Cephalic Coliseum this turn. I will just play, uh, cast Effectless Looting. I feel like my opponent has something here. It's almost impossible that there is nothing in my opponent's hand. This is Cloud Pulse, this is not uh, Delver. 50% of his deck can have answers against us. Yeah, and my opponent is pausing here. Yeah, he definitely has something. My opponent is thinking for almost two minutes. Okay, now they will do something. He will do something. Steps for Colorless Mana. Is this Cozlex Command? If this is Cozlex Command, you can discard our Grave Troll and try again next turn with Cephalic Coliseum. My opponent can exile Anger though. They can exile only two cards. So maybe he will decide to exile Grave Troll and Thug just to put a break on my play. Okay, my opponent tapped for four colorless mana but did nothing yet. He is deeply thinking about what to do. Is this the right choice? Is this the right choice? My guess here is that uh, he is thinking about what to exile with Cosalex Command. He can exile two cards, both treasures, bridge and anger, one treasure and anger, one treasure and bridge. Okay. Okay, both treasures. This will force me to... Okay, Inquiry is actually a great draw in this spot. We had our best draw. Well, probably our second breakthrough would be better, but I think I, I sided out a uh, breakthrough. I'm not sure. Okay, my opponent has Eye of Ugin. They sacrifice one of their spawn tokens, so our bridge got exiled. And now, okay, now they will exile our Cephalic Coliseum. But since we have this Burning Inquiry, we still got a chance here. Oh no, they have Bujukaba. Of, of course, they can search for a... Uh, uh, you see, guys, this is why this is one of our hardest matchups. Our opponent just always have everything. And next turn, they can, uh, he can even replay uh, Leyline of the Void. So now, okay, Edity is not the worst. But my opponent has a Vexing Bubble. <laughs> I'm telling my opponent here, this is such a hard matchup. And he told me, yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah, Burning Inquiry. Okay, my opponent discarded Tabernacle, another exciting effect. We unfortunately couldn't find all the treasures. Let's pass back here. It's weird, but we still get a chance. My opponent can have only useless lands now that uh, he discarded Tabernacle. Okay, he has Glimmer Post. Glimmer Post is fine. Uh, he can go, he can activate Eye of Ugin, right? Okay, Karn. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Okay, this Karn will get what? Lattice? Guys, I'm not even mad because this is not just luck, you know? My opponent has a deck that can disrupt our deck with uh, two tied hands. So let's take Badlands here in case we draw exactly Cabal Therapy to take Lattice from my opponent's hand. Oh, <laughs> and we even draw Cabal Therapy. Okay, uh, and my opponent has something. Veil? Oh, <laughs> uh, GG's opponent. GG's. Uh, let's concede. We tried. We tried so hard. We tried so hard. But uh, yeah, it wasn't meant to be. Not against Cloud Post. Uh, let's try to do better on our round three. All right, our third round this afternoon. Okay, this hand is a keep. Uh, my opponent is Chris McNasty. Not to remember if I ever played against uh, this player before. We are on the play. This is not our fastest hand, but, but this is good. We have a solid turn one, a solid turn two, a solid turn three, if we get there. So I think this is a solid keep. And my opponent also kept seven, so let's go. Let's start with a Volcanic Island. No, no, let's start uh, cracking Wooded Foothills for another Volcanic. If my opponent is playing a Wasteland deck, 
we have a second volcanic for next turn. If my opponent is playing a fast deck, we have a fast turn two with Cephalic Coliseum. And we don't have a black spells anyways to cast in our starting hand. We have other plants. So let's cast Faithless Looting here. Okay, our other Stinkwood Imp. One more Dredger. Unfortunately, we draw an Arkhamoeba, but that's fine. And we pass a turn. My opponent draws, plays Ancient Tomb, Green Monolith. Okay, so this is a combo deck with artifacts. My opponent can even win on turn one, I guess, with their, with their best hands. Manifold Key is a good card to untap Green Monolith. My opponent now can have four mana, five mana with Mox Oppo. If they play something like, okay, just Paradox Engine, do they have something extra? Okay, no. So we are alive. <laughs> let's, uh, let's play, let's add Dredge 5. Okay, other Dredgers, nothing that good. We need to crack the Cephalic Coliseum, hoping for a good sequence here. We can even win this turn. So let's crack Cephalic Coliseum here. It's not that easy to win with a single Cephalic Coliseum, but uh, okay, Orcs, Nakamoeba, we need Dredge Return, and Pox Walkers, one Bridge, and we need Cabal Therapy too. Okay, we, we hit a good cards there, but uh, not a single Cabal Therapy. And that's super unfortunate. So maybe my opponent wins now. Okay, or Narcomiba has haste. Not a single therapy, come on deck. And now we pass the turn. My opponent taps Ancient Tomb for mana, and taps Green Monolith, taps Green Monolith. Oh, Paradoxical Outcome. Uh, this will get three artifacts back to my opponent's hand, and they will draw three cards. But in response, they are just uh, building their mana pool. Now they have five mana in the pool, nine cards in their hand. Each artifact will untap all other non-land permanents, each spell I mean. Oh, and they have the one ring. Uh, so the one ring plus Paradox Engine plus mana plus spells is already a win for my opponent. It would be a massive fail if this is not a win. So I'll just cut here for uh, the last of my opponent's combo. So you can see how uh, they will win this game. So many spells later, my opponent is still playing. The one ring uh, has already eight counters. So my opponent has drawn almost uh, their entire deck. Tapping and tapping, drawing cards. Either Flux Reservoir. So this is their win condition. No Emrakul. Of course my opponent can have Emrakul, but uh, this is like a storm finish. My opponent will cast some more spells and then doing damage directly, being life for that. So 45 life. Interesting to note that my opponent has three cards in their deck. So one thing that I could have here is holding Cephalic Coliseum in a situation that my opponent go really deep into their deck, trying to hit uh, their combo kill, and then force them to draw cards. I do this often against other decks. Uh, but uh, my opponent had three cards exactly, so this would not be a possibility. So let's sideboard and try to do better on game two. I will definitely include Ashen Rider instead of one Ox. And I think on the play, I will just do that. Because those decks sometimes play with uh, a line of the Void, and if I see Leilani of the Void, I will definitely include uh, Bounce Spells. But lately, since Leilani is not that good against Risk Caminator, I'm seeing more and more those, those decks not going for Leilani. And they have uh, Fairy Macabre instead, or Surgical Extraction. Sometimes they have other artifacts, even Graph Digger's Cage. Okay, so this is our Maligan to 6. Hmm, this is not the best. Can we keep this? Double LED plus Cephalic Coliseum is hard to say no. But uh, this is not a combo kill on turn 1. This may be a combo kill on turn 2. I'm so inclined to keep this, but I'm not sure. We are on the play. Should I go for something faster? If this mountain was a uh, patch land, this would be definitely a keep. Because we can go after Badlands and Cascabal Therapy targeting us, play double LED and pass a turn. My opponent also went to 6 cards. Let's mulligan this. Oh, let's go to 4, guys. Oh, our dream. Or dream of winning with the new list. Let's money to four. Okay, this is our best hand, no doubt, because now we have double Cephalic Coliseum, a single LED, but this is more reliable because now we don't need to. Maybe our, uh, that uh, that hand was also good enough to win that money on six, but uh, since we went until four cards, uh, this, I, I will not complain. I will definitely not complain. Next turn, okay, my opponent plays Urza Saga. Next turn, we can play a single breakthrough. Pirate Spellbomb. Not that great against our deck, but uh, it is an artifact. And Mox Opal. Okay, so this is low. And this Usha Saga will definitely... Okay, another LED is a great draw. Uh, this Usha Saga will go after uh, Graveyard Hate, so we have just two turns to win this game. We don't have Mountains, so we don't have Haste here. Let's do Breakthrough with X equals to 0. My opponent can have Force of Will. If they do have Force of Will, and this gets countered, 
Okay, no force of will. Oh, we even found a faithless looting. So now we can discard our first LED to cast faithless looting and our second LED to crack Cephali Collision. My opponent still can have force of will or some other counter spells. I doubt that, but uh, they may have. I saw that in the past. But uh, we can cast faithless looting first. But I think since my opponent can have something, I'll crack Cephali Collision first to guarantee that we will still have threshold after, after that. Because if we cast Faithless Looting and my opponent decides to counter it, uh, then we would not have threshold this turn. Okay, so Grave Troll, Ogari Thug, and Sync with Imp, Dredge 6, 4, and 5. Uh, and we can even cast Otherworldly Gaze trying to hit an Ox if we want to. We don't need to go uh, to Faithless Looting. Or we can cast Faithless Looting and leave 2 red mana. Yeah, this is better. Let's cast Faithless Looting and leave 2 red mana in case we... So let's cast Faithless Looting here, leaving 1 blue and 1... Red, so we can cast other worldly gaze after that. And Box Walkers enters the battlefield. And now we don't have lethal because. Okay, just lands. I can keep one land on top. Let's keep Volcanic. Because we don't have haste. But next turn we do have haste. So let's cast out Cabal Therapy targeting my opponent. Sacrificing Box Walkers. Oh, and not only because of that. We don't have Dread Return now. Now I'm seeing that we don't have Dread Return. So we will need next turn to win this game. This was a mulligan to, far, to 4. This is impressive. My opponent kept six cards, I guess. I'm not sure what to name here. They don't have force of will, right? Because I did everything I wanted to do here. So they don't have force. The one ring, maybe green monolith, because my opponent wants more mana for next turn. This is our single shot. We don't have another cabal therapy. I feel like I'll probably miss here, but I think I'll go for the one ring. Okay. Oh, they had force of will. What? Why? Maybe they thought that everything was so important in their hand. I, I don't see why my opponent didn't fire Force of Will on Breakthrough, on Looting. Okay, my opponent plays Lotus Petal. This was their draw for the turn. I can see why my opponent didn't want to, to exile Emery or Transmit Artifact. But uh, yeah, maybe my opponent didn't have Lotus Petal. So yeah, now my opponent can go sacrificing Spell Bomb to a Graveyard 8 card. Luckily for us, even if we didn't have what we needed to win, Last turn, yeah, my opponent goes after Soul Guide Lantern. We are still favored to win this game because we have three, ten, 10 power in the battlefield. So my opponent will have only Emery and Force of Oil now. They cast Emery, sacrificing Lotus Petal. They didn't mill anything relevant there, so they sacrifice Soul Guide Lantern immediately. We have only a land in, on top, but now we can attack two turns in a row trying to win the game. Let's, let's do it. My opponent needs to block with Emery at some point. Maybe not now. So let's attack. Yeah, no blocks. We deal 10 damage to our opponent. This Urza Saga can go after something. But this Mox Opal is not mana now. This is my opponent's only artifact in play. So they tap Urza Saga for mana. It was so important to put some creatures in play before my opponent uh, get this luck with Emery and Soul Guide Lantern. Because this means that I will never have a graveyard again this game. Okay, my opponent chose. Manifold key, and that's it. <laughs> they conceded, and we won this game after a mulligan to four. Maybe my opponent was holding Force of Will there because they felt that they need they needed Emery plus Lock to win this game for good. But this cost my opponent's game here, and we we took this for our, our advantage. So now let's take one otherworldly gaze to reinclude one ox to be faster. Otherworldly gaze is good, but is one it is one of our slowest place and being on the draw we need to be faster than ever let's submit oh maybe one acorn instead of one pox walkers okay this hand is awful my opponent is also malignant to see oh in burning inquiry we trust can we keep a hand with lands and burning inquiry <laughs> my opponent kept six cards we must go to five i guess but uh it is tempting i'll keep this and let's uh and let's put scouting turn uh this is probably too risky, but having a Burning Inquiry trying to disrupt my opponent's hand maybe is something that can help us to win this game being on the draw. And for my previous experience, maybe this was just a mulligan and I'm being crazy, but uh, in my previous experience, uh, we are so unfavored to win this game already. So, okay, let's just cast Burning Inquiry immediately. Okay, we didn't discard what we want, but we forced our opponents to discard Double Ancient Tomb and a Thought Cast. And we will just pass a turn. <laughs> okay, my opponent plays a second Emery just to mill more cards. So my opponent needs to find something there. 
Okay, they just uh, take this Mox Opal. Now they have two mana and no lands. One Lava Spur Boots. Oh, no lands. So actually our Burning Anchory did some job uh, forcing my opponent to discard double Ancient Tomb. Okay, okay. We will draw. Icarid is awful. This is not a good game of Magic because I kept uh, that awful hand. But uh, maybe because of that, <laughs> uh, we, we put some breaks on our opponent's play. And now we just play Evoking Iron and Pass. Of course that was a mulligan, right? <laughs> but they still don't have a combo or a ways to win this game. They need something. Okay, Oja Saga is something. Now the clock is ticking. Well, next turn we can just uh, cast Faithless Looting with Flashback. My opponent plays Green Monolith, taps it for the One Ring. Okay, so now it is difficult. Emery doesn't have great targets there, only Bubble to draw an extra card. And my opponent immediately caches the Bubble. They play a new Mox Opal. Just to equip Lava Spore Boots, he draws an extra card. Now it's our turn. Paragraph draw, nothing that good. Let's play Cephalic Coliseum, since we are drawing more cards. If we draw another Coliseum, we can have double Coliseum next turn. Nothing good, just double Grave Troll. So we're giving all the time my opponent needs to win this game. Can they do it? They will draw at least two cards with this, the one ring, and more with Emery. Okay, they tap the one ring. Yeah, this wasn't a keep for sure. Guys, you should not keep hands like this uh, when you play with Turbo Dredge, okay? I'm probably just hungry. I need to have lunch. Okay, my opponent is thinking a lot, so maybe we still have one turn. My opponent replays Bubble, breaks it immediately, and they can create a construct with Uja Saga, but uh, that's beatable. Okay, nothing too scary, and we have another turn. We haven't shown right in our hand, so we still have a chance. But this is probably our last turn to win this game if we can do this. So let's dredge six. We will play Basic Mountain, and let's crack Cephalic Coliseum. Start our dredge in dredge 6, and dredge 5. We found a Nakumiba, found Bridge, we found Anger. Let's dredge 4, another Cabal Therapy. So let's discard... Mm, we didn't hit Ox, so we will probably cast Otherworldly Gaze there to get our Poxwalkers back. We also have Cabal Therapy. We can create many zombies here with haste, but this is not lethal by itself. So let's discard Dash and Rider in case we find... A Dread Return with Otherworldly Gaze. I don't think I will discard Ikorid here. I don't think we have time for Ikorid next turn. I think I'll guarantee another Dredger there. And maybe if we need Ikorid in the future, uh, it is better to leave it in our hand. So let's cast this Gaze, and likely we'll find a Dredge Return to, to bring back this Ashen Rider with haste. That would be amazing. So <gasps> we hit it. Hit Poxwalkers, Dredge Return, and Cephalic Museum, everything to the bin. Now we can cast about Therapy. There, I think I will name Force of Foil, because we want this Dread Return to resolve for sure. And now I will name Force of Will. Okay, nothing actually, Sink into Stupor. Uh, Sink into Stupor can, can bounce a spell here, but my opponent will need to tap for mana. And I have three other Cabal Therapy, so we'll have lethal anyways. Let's see if my opponent, I'll test my opponent's ability here. Let's see if they will see Sink into Stupor. But even if they cast it, we will have Lethal with uh, Zombies because of Pox Walkers plus Cabal Therapy combo. Yeah, guys, I think we, we got this. Better lucky than good. <laughs> After a uh, hand with a single Burning Anchor and lands. And Ashen Rider, of course. So my opponent is thinking here. So it, it is a win anyways. If my opponent goes for the Bounce spell, we already have a Lethal here because I have uh, three extra Cabal Therapies in my grave here. Oh, they saw it. Yeah, they are returning Dread Return to my hand. I, I can win in, in many ways here. Uh, of course, Dredge Return will not be returned here because it will be exiled. But I could uh, win with Ashen Rider or with Zombies. And that's the synergy of this deck. So, yeah, let's uh, name a Reservoir. And now Lotus Petal. My opponent is not conceding, but uh, we, we have the win here. We just lose this if we pass the turn accidentally. If by accident we misclick, <laughs> we lose this. But uh, we have... We have it. I will put my Icarid to the bin now, revealing my hand to my opponent. And now let's attack for Lethal. Let's not misclick, right? Attack with all creatures, that's fine. No blockers. And we did it. <laughs> we won our third round. Now I will have some lunch because I'm really hungry. And I'll come back for round four. Ooh, let's eat something. Coming back stronger for round four on this challenge. Uh, this is a mulligan. Okay, this can be really good. If we resolve this otherworldly gaze. This could be even a turn 1 without uh, haste. But this is probably more a turn 2. 
I will keep it. Let's bottom one bridge. We are on the play. Double LED plus land plus flashback spell is always good when playing this deck. Okay, my opponent is thinking. Playing a Legacy Challenge on Sunday is interesting because between rounds, I take the opportunity to do things here at home. So I took my dog for a walk, uh, then I have lunch, then I took a shower, things like that. Okay, my opponent is mulliganing to 5. Okay, my opponent kept 5, and let's start. Let's place a Fatal Collision, LED, LED. And I think I'll cast Otherworldly Gaze immediately. It's rare, but uh, we could mill Dredger plus Looting here. Okay, two Dredgers and a land. We now have red mana, blue mana, so we can win on turn 2 with hasty creatures. Let's pass the turn. Now it's my opponent's turn. They draw. Okay, they, they just conceded. Uh, good news, we are ahead. Dredge is too strong. Bad news, we don't know what my opponent is playing. So this is a, a call that we can do playing uh, MTG. If you think you are lost, you can just uh, give up immediately just to hide inform information. So now I don't know what my opponent is playing. Blindly here, I've just included a National Rider instead of an Ox, and that's it. I could go for a bold move here, including the Legend of the Void, if, I, if I'm suspicious that my opponent can play Reanimator or other graveyard strategies. I could also include Bounce spells to the Legend of the Void, if I know for sure that my opponent is playing Leyline. But uh, playing Turbo Dredge, usually the way I go is sideboarding the minimum when I don't have information. Okay, now we are on the draw. And this is not good enough. And my opponent kept 7, so any good hand is a keep here. Uh, this is a keep, not the best, but this is a keep. And maybe Burning Inquiry can, uh, can do some work here on turn 2. Okay, my opponent has Leyline of the Void. <laughs> so we will lose this to Leyline, probably. My opponent kept 7. Oh, it is Eldrazi. Okay, now I know, I know what, why my opponent uh, decided to not show any information on game 1, because I will probably sideboard in the best way. Now that I think we just lost, I'll start with Burning Inquiry, just to see a little bit else from my opponent's hand. Okay, they discarded the Warrior of Destiny, Michael Spawn, and Eye of Ugin. So I think this is just Eldrazi and not, not Cloud Post as our other opponent. My opponent plays Ancient Tomb and pass. We draw an Arkhamoeba, that's looting. And now again, I'm, I, I'm still playing, even, even if I lost this, this game already, because I just want to see a little bit more from my opponent's. A hand if possible. So let's discard some useless cards when your opponent has Leyline, like LED and Bridge. And let's pass. We can always cast Nakomiba, Nakomiba, Stinkwood Imp, and attack. Okay, my opponent is stepping lands on my end step, so maybe this is Kozilex Command. This card is so good against us. So my opponent, yeah, my opponent had uh, Kozilex Command and also Leyline of the Void. And also good persistent mana. And now they play Eevee Maya. Okay, Thought Not Seer. Now I, I, we can concede here. My opponent sees my hand, sees that I don't have anything scary. Okay, we can concede. So this is Agro Eldrazi, I mean, not a Cloud Post or Ramping strategy to Emrakul, probably. My opponent will be lower to the ground. So let's take Ashen Rider here. It is a good card, but we need to include five answers to Leyline. A little bit of everything, one Gaze, one Pox Walkers. Let's try one less Inquiry and maybe, maybe one less Dread Return. I'm still testing ways to sideboard against some new decks like Eldrazi. And now we are on the play with better information. So now maybe we are a favorite to win. Yes, I would like to play first. Okay, you have double Chain of Vapor. Two lands. We can cast Cabal Therapy targeting ourselves. So this is a keep. Not the fastest hand. But since we have access to two mana here, uh, this is not bad. My opponent is having their mulligan. And having double Chain of Vapor is not that bad against Eldrazi, even if we bounce uh, the ley line. And then we can bounce a creature if we need to. Just as a tempo play. Okay, my opponent... Oh, they have two ley lines. And we have two chain of vapors. So, uh, yeah. And my opponent now has only four cards in their hand. Now it is their turn. They play Ancient Tomb. Oh no, they have Chalice. Oh no. Hmm. Now we probably cannot win anymore. The bad thing against... Uh, the bad thing about chain of vapor or other one mana bounce spells is in situations like this. It isn't common. But uh, some decks will have starting hands with Leyline and Chalice of the Void. And we don't have two mana bounce spells or two mana uh, destroying spells to those ley lines. A card like Echoing Truth would be really good here. But we don't have them. So I will bounce one Leyline, why not? But uh, at least I'll show my opponent that I had <laughs> something. 
Uh, okay, now we can just uh, cast Nako Miba. Let's draw another land. So let's play it and cast Nako. Block. 18 turns. My opponent plays Cavern, so this is probably over. Uh, I kind of feel bad, of course, because I had the answers. I had a good starting hand to beat uh, Leyline. But, uh, yeah, my, okay, this is just a small Eudrosi. Retreat and, an oh, and another bounce spell. So, yeah, this could be good. No, it isn't. Maybe you should have at least one, maybe two Echoing Truth in our sideboard because Eudrosi is getting more popular. And uh, we had a moment on our last few months that uh, this combination of Chalice decks with Leyline were not so popular. Even Mono Red Prison decks didn't have this combination all the times like before. They, are, they were favoring other Graveyard Hate cards. But now if this is getting more and more popular again with Eudrosi decks, we maybe should include two Echoing Truth in the sideboard. Your opponent will not always have this combination, of course. But uh, yeah, my opponent will play Thought Not Seer. They will see our sad hand. Yeah, opponent, I had this. If you didn't had, if you didn't have a Chalice Plus Leyline, I could win even against Double Leyline. And now we draw a Stinkwood Ink. No, just a Breach. Yeah, I'll attack one more uh, time here, but I'm already in, in denial here. Of course, uh, we will not win this game. Now it's my opponent's turn. They attack me, dealing 7 damage. And another Drazi. Now they will search for something. Uh, even if we had uh, our bounce spells available to us now, even if our opponent didn't have Chalice, this is a stronger start. Leyline plus a good uh, sequence in this deck. My opponent could even wait one more turn to search for Ujuka Bog, for example. So this is really strong. Yeah, <laughs> my opponent even has Devourer of Destiny. So this is game over. GG. Okay, almost there. We had uh, a possibility here. But it is good. This is a new deck and uh, moments like this can help us to build a stronger sideboard to this new metagame that we are living in. So let's uh, go for our next match. All right, uh, or round five. And this is a mulligan. Oh, this is unfortunately a mulligan too. Okay, my opponent decided to keep six. But this is also a mulligan. Okay, this is our best hand. Nothing great, but uh, I... Th the only question here is I, if I think it's better to keep a dredger in our starting hand or if it is better to guarantee two lands. I think I will keep two lands. I don't know what my opponent is playing and we are on the draw. I know that this will leave me with less opportunities to win on the first turn. But uh, if my opponent is playing any... Oh, okay, my opponent is disrupting us. So yeah, it was good to, to have two lands instead of one. Let's see if my opponent has something... It is oops. Okay, maybe we will lose, we will lose on our second, our second uh, turn anyways. My opponent plays a second land from Mox. Okay, under City Informer, we have one turn to win this game. This is oops. We have many draws here that can win the game immediately. I th I'm, I'm thinking about cracking an LED immediately. Because if we see in our top three cards a Dredger plus Breakthrough, we can win the game. Or even Burning Inquiry can win the game here. Maybe looting, probably not. Or we can just uh, play a turn, play our land for the turn on turn two, and then cast in case. But uh, I think we ha we'll have more chances doing this now. So let's discard our hand just to cast over the gaze. Okay, we found looting, but no dredger, so we will lose. We don't have we don't stand a chance here because even if I keep uh, looting, I need to discard uh, cards here. We will not have. Enough. I could actually, actually, that's not true. Uh, if I kept looting, there was like a half percentage, half percent uh, of winning chances according to what we draw. But uh, yeah, let's see how my opponent will win. Let's see uh, their deck. In case you don't know how Upso spells works, now they will sacrifice under City Informer, meeting their entire deck because they don't have actually lands. They have spells that also can be lands. So they can mill entirely. And let's see, they have all in the week. And four copies of Pact of Negation. Reanimate spells. Yeah, this seems like they're new standards. And they can cast Dread Return to reanimate Thassa's Oracle immediately. So yeah, let's concede here. We have good tools to be better, be better after sideboarding. So we definitely want uh, four copies of Leilani of the Void. I would like to include uh, four copies of Leilani of Sanctity too. But uh, on the play, I'm not sure if I would do that. And that's because my opponent can have a uh, plan B of winning with Goblin Char Belcher. I'm not sure if every Oops player does that, but uh, I saw that yesterday playing a league, and there is an argument for Ashen Rider and Icarid, but I will probably include only Leylines. Let's take our expendable cards here. I'll include four Leyline, 
We can take one breakthrough from the deck, one Foxwalkers, one Ox, and one Otherworldly Gaze. Or maybe two Gazes instead of uh, two Oxen. Yeah, let's, let's re-include Ox. Now we are on the play. And we have Leyline in our starting hand. But nothing else. <laughs> Just land so we can even cast an Archimibus and hope for the best. Do we keep this? I'll keep this. Because I kept seven cards, so I don't think my opponent will mulligan to have answers to Leyline. Let's play our Leyline of the Void. And we even have access to all of our lands here. So let's play Volcanic Island. Okay, my opponent just conceded. <laughs> uh, maybe they didn't include answers to Leyline and decided to, or, or Plan B, and decided to just uh, abandon the game immediately. Yeah, Leyline the Void, too strong against Oops. Uh, now, on the draw, and my opponent knows that we have Leyline, so maybe I can get some room to include four Leyline of Sanctity. And my opponent also plays Grief, I guess, so they can have discard spells, Grief. We have a scam package, if I'm correct, so let's take some more cards from our deck. Because playing against Oops, the first thing that you need to think about is to not lose, because they can win in a single turn immediately. This is a faster deck than Turbulence, so let's be super protective with 8 ley lines, and so we are on the draw. Okay, this is tempting, but uh, this is a mulligan. This is also a mulligan. My opponent kept uh, 7 cards. Okay, this is good. Nothing extraordinary, but uh, we can... Put box walkers. Oh, and I didn't tell you. I didn't told. I did not tell you yet. But uh, Cephalic Museum is also a game-winning uh, play against. Uh, oops. If we have uh, Trishode, uh, we can win. <clears throat> Sorry, we can win uh, by activating targeting our opponent when they will combo. So let's play Cephalic Museum and LED and pass a turn. Let's see if they have something here. They kept seven. They might have something. Okay, they play second land. Tapped. Unmask targeting me. That's actually amazing. Unless they can reanimate one of my creatures. Okay, they discarded my Stinkwood Imp. And now we can dredge. <laughs> and now we can even win the game on turn 2. Thank you, opponent. Uh, so, yeah, let's dredge 5. Uh, I think I'll go for it. I will not hold Cephalic Coliseum here. We have the advantage. And my opponent's uh, answer to the line uh, costs 2 mana. So, uh, if they didn't uh, cast it last turn, it's because they don't have it. So, yeah, let's dredge. Back in Coliseum, dredge 6. Okay, we have uh, Faithless Looting, we have Anger. So let's dredge, dredge, and dredge. Oh, I misclicked. Uh, I, I should uh, click on Think Within there. So now, Faithful is looting. Ox Walkers will enter the battlefield. We'll dredge six. Now we have even Ox. Okay, let's put both Nakumibas play. We have how many therapies? One, two. Let's cast our first therapy targeting my opponent, sacrificing Fox Walkers, getting some zombies. And I'm not sure about what to name. I don't think my opponent has Dark Ritual, because if they do, they could. Put something, so let's just name one of their creatures, their city informer. No, they have the other one, Balustrade Spy. And call in the weak. Okay. So they don't have anything there that is scary. We can win on two turns here, attacking this turn and on the next turn. So I think I would just take the blocker. But there is an argument here to take uh, their ramp card. But they don't have a uh, creature, so I think just taking their creature is probably the best. Yeah, let's take the spy. Okay. Now we can attack for 10, dealing 10 damage, and we'll pass the turn. We have Lethal next turn. My opponent needs to win the game this turn, which I think it's not possible. Yeah, my opponent conceded. We won. We won against Oops, which is the fastest deck in Legacy, but I think uh, our deck is probably more flexible. And uh, yeah, we won. Let's wait to our next match. Round 6 is starting. We are on the draw against Astro Zombie. Uh, this is our... Let's keep this. This is our last uh, round on landings here, uh, and we have a small chance to enter the top eight because all of our five uh, opponents are doing a great job. So uh, I saw on the standings that we are the first 3 2 player so far. So I think uh, we, we have a slight chance to enter the top eight, so we should uh, win Astro Zombie, win against uh, them. To maybe enter the top 8 or just to secure our top 16 again for the two, uh, second day in a row. So let's see what they will play here. My opponent plays Flooded Strength and passes. We like that. And we draw. Okay. Basic Mountain. Not sure if I will play it. Maybe my opponent. Let's test my opponent's hand here because they may have days. But since we have double uh, red spell in our hand. Oh, another Burning Inquiry and LED. Unfortunately, not a Dredger, but I think we can discard Cabal Therapy here. And basic mounting. And as I was saying, I think uh, when you have double red spell with LED, it is probably better to just uh, test your opponent's hand with 
the right spell first. It's all about uh, your feeling. I, I see myself as an intuitive player sometimes. So I just uh, had the feeling that uh, I should play looting before LED. Okay, this is Risk Caminator, so maybe we just uh, lose here. But since we have double red man and double inquiry and double LED, even if my opponent reanimates that Atraxa, we stand a chance. I just want to... Okay, they have Wasteland, so this is a good start. And they will reanimate Atraxa. I just don't want my opponent to find a Grief here. Oh, they do find a Grief. But since they already played Wasteland, maybe they were playing uh, around days. They cannot reanimate Grief this turn, so they can take one of my Burning Inquiry. Uh, days is useless because we have lots of mana because of LEDs. Let's see. They will probably take Doughty, Force of Will, Reef, I think. Okay, Doughty Void Walker, Force, Ponder, and Swamp. So they don't want Grief. Maybe they already have a Grief, or maybe they think uh, Doughty plus Force of Will is enough to win the game. Okay, they are just passing the turn. We like that. Okay, they will not cast that Wasteland. <gasps> they didn't cast Wasteland. Uh, activate Wasteland, I mean. So maybe they... Oh, okay, they must have Troll there uh, to find a mana to cast Doughty Void Walker. This is probably their plan. So let's cast our Bunny Inquiry and see if our opponent has uh, Force of Will. Okay, they will cycle Troll, as I was thinking about. Okay, Underground C. But now my opponent can even discard Underground C if this resolves. Okay, my opponent discarded Force of Will, Ponder, and Swamp. Uh, we don't have treasures yet. Let's clean that. Okay, my opponent don't have that Force of Will anymore. So they still have Doughty Void Walker and Underground Sea. Let's cast our second Burning Inquiry. If my opponent tries to counter that, no. Okay, now we have Dredgers, we have Ox, Faithless Looting. My opponent still has Doughty Void Walker and Underground Sea. Burning Inquiry, going six card deep into our deck and finding our Gorgreg Grave Troll and multiple red enablers. Now I think I will start with Ox here immediately instead of going with an LED first. Let's go deeper here. Because we have many spells that are expendable here, we can exile them. We only care about one other worldly gaze, grave troll, and cabal therapy. We can exile everything else. Let's keep a looting too, in case this plan fails. Okay, it is resolving. Ox enters the battlefield. So my opponent probably has only days. And now we can even win the game. I go grab grave troll twice and one stink with imp. We have cabal therapy. So we can sacrifice Ox to cabal therapy and replay it twice. Let's show my opponent who is. The best graveyard deck. <laughs> uh, I'll name uh, Doughty Void Walker, but Days is also good, a good name. Yeah, they have... Ah, only Doughty, okay. So in Tomb Grief, my opponent has nothing. So let's win the game, shall we? We will exile some other cards. And Ox enters the battlefield again. We we'll dredge 6, 6, and 5. We found another Cabal Therapy, Bridge, Narcomweba. Now we even have Dredge Return. No Anger yet, and we still have 10 cards in our deck. <coughs> So we must go deeper to win this turn, and I think I'll not, I'll not pass the turn here. I think I will play for a win. Atraxa will gain 7 life to our opponent, but we can deal more than 20 damage this turn. It doesn't matter too much, let's uh, name in Tomb. And now we can recast Ox. Ox enters the battlefield, now we need to care about the order here. We want to reveal Anger, but uh, let's dredge 5. I think I'll dredge 5, 4 and draw a card, because this way we can go until the very end of our deck. Yeah, we already found Anger. Let's dredge four. Okay, and we found another Poxwalkers. Narcomiba was our last card. We cannot uh, cast Dredge Return targeting Ox anymore because we don't have any more uh, cards to draw. This would lose the game. So let's cast the Cabal Therapy to get uh, three Poxwalkers back. And we can reanimate a large uh, Grave Troll after that. Yeah, let's take your Grief. And now we can reanimate our Golgari Grave Troll. It will be huge. Larger than Atraxa, for sure. So my opponent's Atraxa needs to block Gogar Grief Troll, my opponent goes back to 19, but we have dozens of zombies. We still have another Cabal Therapy there, we can even uh, create three more zombies here. Since my opponent is letting me do it, it doing this, I, I'll do it. Naming anything. This is such a good engi engine. And now we will attack with everyone. 19 zombies, two Narcomoebas and an Ox. Okay, we won. The way I see this, I picture this, is like a large troll and an ox leading a zombie army to win a match in the fields. Okay, so uh, we, of course, on the draw, I always want to include Leyline of the Void because sometimes your Risk Caminator opponent just uh, has a fast reanimation plan instead of Doughty Void Walkers. So we must stop this being on the draw. So let's include uh, four copies of Leyline and take a bit, little bit of everything. It's good to take uh, one ox because my opponent can even reanimate one ox. So. 
double ox is not the best against reanimation strategies because even if you find your ley line, your opponent can force you to discard your ox, for example, and reanimate your ox, and you have to deal with a four two creature that draws cards to your opponent. Oh, okay, double ley line. Is this good enough? We are on the draw. My opponent kept seven, so I'll probably mm. keep it. This is not the best hand, of course, but uh, since my opponent kept seven cards, I think uh, I will take this risk. My opponent plays Misty, tracks it for an underground sea, and ponders. Okay. Of course, my opponent can have a turn two Dauchi, but I think uh, having Leyland Void on the draw can work some, some part of the time. Let's play ADD. Okay, my opponent will counter for Sofu Exiling Days. So my opponent kept a uh, hand with counter spells. And now we need red mana. My opponent has Wasteland. That's okay. Better. A wasteland than a Dauchi would walk around turn two. We draw another LED. I will play immediately. Since my opponent exiled a daze, let's not be afraid of a second counter spell. LED is in play. We need to find a dredger or mana or both. My opponent plays polluted delta and passes. Okay, another red spell, not what we want to see here. My opponent cracks polluted delta for a surveil land. So okay, they exiled in tomb. So we probably had success playing our strategy with both Leyland and the Void. My opponent is playing super slow. This is already turn 4 and they did nothing. But we don't have our own game plan. We need lands and dredgers here. Just a single land could be already good. My opponent cracks both Delta for another surveil land. They are good. Okay, they don't want to reanimate for obvious reasons. Now it's turn 5. Okay, my opponent casts Brainstorm. One day we'll find our land. And when this day comes, it will be amazing. Until then, we must wait patiently. Oh, Engineer Explosives for zero. Okay, my opponent wants to deal with my LED immediately. This is probably smart because since I, I don't have mana here, uh, this is probably smart. And now they have Wasteland. We draw. Well, therapy is not what we want. My opponent has three cards in their hand, probably cards like Entomb and Reanimate. Maybe a Troll. They are slowly getting to six mana. Breakthrough is not what we want. So let's just discard the ball therapy here. Now is my opponent's turn. They pass the turn. Okay. We draw Pokes Walkers is not what we want. Uh, what a game, what a game. We stopped our opponent's plans, but we never did what we could. Oh, my opponent found Dauchi Void Walker. So now this game is over. Let's see if we will finally draw a land. We do. Uh, let's cast Burning Anchor here, just to see a little bit more of my opponent's hand. Unless they have counter spell. Okay. Now my opponent cracks Wasteland. They play another Surveil Land. And a second Dauchi. They attack me dealing 3 damage. We found Cephalic Coliseum. And I I'm only playing... Uh, hoping that we can find another mana so I can try Burning Inquiry again. Just to see a little bit more of my opponent's hand. Information is everything. So let's put everything into our graveyard slash exile zone. Because we don't we don't have ways to deal with Delta Void Walker. My opponent attacks. They play Polluted Delta and pass the turn. And yeah, too many ley lines. <laughs> but I have no regrets skipping that hand. Because you see, we could easily win the game after we found our ley line of the void with LEDs. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Let's concede here. And now it's different because we are on the play. And being on the play, I don't want to play defensively. We play a turbo deck. And my opponent needs uh, three counter spells to stop us to do our thing. Let's re-include the Woodly Gaze, Ox, and that's it. Okay, now we are on the play. Okay, this this hand's good. I'll keep it. We need to find dredgers, but uh, we have mana. We have uh, our fastest enabler. Let's play LED. Let's see if my opponent will respond. No? Now we have some options here. Let's crack Scouting turn. Take in a Volcanic Island. I will pass the turn and cast other World Gaze on my opponent's upkeep here. And if they want to reanimate a creature, one of our creatures, that's fine. Okay, we didn't find anything, just a Komoiba. But I will keep LED. I envision a great turn 2 with double LED, Burning Inquiry, and Cephalic Coliseum. A Komoiba enters the battlefield. And we have double other World Gaze too. Even Pox Walkers can enter the battlefield if we cast all the early gaze with flashback. So my opponent plays Underground Sea and passes. This represents a turn 2 Dauchi Void Walker. My opponent did encounter my, my place. So I think they probably have turn 2 Dauchi Void Walker. Or maybe a turn 2 Atraxa like um, they did on game 1. Let's try all the early gaze first. Yeah. And now they need to counter this Burning Inquiry. And this is not enough. They don't counter it. Great. So... Dredge 4, Dredge 5, and Dredge 5. Okay, we have Dredge Return. We don't have Ox yet, but we have... Oh, we don't have Looting. But we have Gaze. So Gaze can find uh, one of them to us. So let's crack LED first. And now that I know that my opponent doesn't have Force of Will. 
Let's cast our first of the water gaze. Oxwalker enters the battlefield. Let's find a red enabler here. Okay, we found looting. Let's put everything into our graveyard. And now let's crack a DD for red to cast Faithless Looting with one mana on our pool. So we are playing around days the whole time. Okay, my opponent will cast Brainstorm finally. Maybe they didn't have days be uh, Brainstorm before or Burning Inquiry. Let's see if they found. Okay, they didn't find uh, Force of Fuel. So we'll dredge 5 and dredge 6. We have another bridge and Pox Walkers and Ox and dredge return. So, yeah. Yeah, guys, I think uh, this is a win. We even have uh, Cabal Therapy here. And the only card that can stop us here is a Force. Force of Will or Force of Negation. But I don't think my opponent has it. I think I'll go for a dredge return immediately because my opponent obviously would. Uh, you know what? L let's not be lazy. Let's cast Cabal Therapy here because the right play. I saw this before. Some opponents try to be smart uh, and uh, hold the Force of Will for your best card. Like they saw a Dread Return and they maybe think, okay, let's wait because I have only one Force, so I wait until the very end and then I can win on my own turn. So I saw this before. Let's cast this Cabal Therapy, naming Force of Will. Okay, no, and they in fact had Days, reanimate, so we are good here. Let's just reanimate Ox, sacrificing Pox Walkers, Pox Walkers, and Nakumiba. I shouldn't say reanimate ox, right? I should say uh, let's return ox because I'm casting dread return. But the word reanimate is so much more powerful. So I will return ox to the battlefield. And now we can even dredge six and dredge six again. Let's go to the bottom. Okay, no anger yet. I still have anger, right? Let's check the sideboard. Yeah. So, but we will win this turn, right? So we can dredge six here. Uh, <laughs> I'm not losing it, right? We have Anger in our deck, so let's dredge 6. Okay, Anger was almost on the bottom of our deck. We have 0 cards in our hand, and let's win with 0 cards. We have more therapies, more zombies coming. We can name everything, anything here, actually. Let's name Tamio, because I don't like her. <laughs> uh, he draws cards for our opponents. And now we can cast our other therapy, so we have more zombies. And we still have one last therapy. My opponent is letting me do this, so let's take both reanimates. All of this played around days the whole time because of double LED, double LED. And let's name uh, Grief. And my opponent's only chance of winning this game is if I misclick, if I misclick and pass the turn without attacking. So let's not do that. Let's attack with all creatures. Let's check. Everything's fine. And we win. <laughs> Dealing much more than lethal. GG's. We won. Let's see if we will enter the top 8 or if we will just uh, stay on top 16 again. If you're enjoying my content and want to support me as a content creator, the best way of doing it is on Patreon. Being there, you can read my weekly articles and also my sideboard guides to play this and other dredge decks in other formats. I want to say thank you to all my patrons that you can see here on this page. Now, back to the games. Guys, I almost lost my top 8 without playing it because... Let me apologize here to my opponent. I was distracted here uh, doing some family stuff. And they didn't notice that uh, we already were in the top 8. But now uh, I'm here. <laughs> but I have only 12 minutes to try to win this match. So this hand is a keep. We have Dredgers, we have Burning Inquiry, we have double LED. Let's see if my opponent has a response to that. This can be a turn 1. Okay, my opponent has a response here. They counter with Faithless Looting, but we have a second LED. And now we will cast Burning Inquiry, tracking LED in response. A red mana. This can be a turn 1. Can we win? Immediately. Okay, dredge 5. And dredge 6, great. And now we'll dredge 6 again. Yeah, we have double ox there. Ox walk is an even dredge return, yes. Yeah, this will be a turn 1 win, I, I suppose. Akumiba <laughs> enters the battlefield. And now uh, let's see my opponent's hand first. Because now my opponent uh, draw more cards, right? Because of Burning Inquiry. Okay, my opponent is just conceding. So yeah, <laughs> turn 1 win with uh, Burning Inquiry, ox, and double LED. So this seems to be a Riscaminator. My opponent had Force of Will, Days, and Atraxa against Riscaminator on the draw for the line of the Void. Let's take one of each here. Ox, Breakthrough, Oxwalkers, and Gaze. Maybe two Gazes instead of Breakthrough. Okay, we are on the draw. This is a Mulligan. My opponent is also going to 6. Okay, this is similar to our uh, first uh, game. This is not so strong, but uh, this is a keep, of course. Uh, let's put Breeder Cabal Therapy here. I'll be super bold here and I'll put Cabal Therapy, I think. Because we'll have only three bridges, and a bridge is an important, uh, important tool to win this game as fast as possible. My opponent plays Polluted Delta. They 
They also had a Mulligan to 6, and they were on C and Ponder. Okay, so no immediate Entomb. Okay, my opponent didn't shuffle the deck. Oh, they have Grief. Okay, now they will probably take my Burning Inquiry, or maybe LED if they have a Daze. Yeah, no Red Enablers for us, and we will draw. Nakomiba, not a good draw. <laughs> Let's play Badlands and LED, and pass the turn, hoping for no Delta Void Walker. Anything else is acceptable. My opponent plays Polity Delta, and passes. Good, good news. We will draw. Not an Akumwe, but no, no. Uh, the worst draw in our entire deck. Two turns in a row. So let's just pass here. My opponent cracks Polity Delta. First Surveil land, yeah. They draw, and Ponders again. Okay. Okay, this time they decided to shuffle their library. Oh, Wasteland is bad. Okay, they will not sacrifice Wasteland immediately. Now it's our turn. Now they go for a Wasteland. Okay. Draw Breakthrough. Breakthrough is good. We just need a land to try to win the game. It will be harder. It will be harder than usual because we have two Narcomoebas in our hand. But we can still win this. My opponent casts Brainstorm. Throws a card. Another Wasteland. Okay. Oh, Psychic Frog. Psychic Frog is a great card. Let's draw a land here. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's try to win the game. My opponent has two cards in their hand. Uh, we are immune to Daze. So we can take this Volcanic Island and cast Breakthrough. Holding priority. Paying the mana. Sacrificing anything in response for three red mana. My opponent needs Force of Will or Force of Negation here. They don't have, so let's stretch six and six again. And five. We already have Ox there. We can play it around days. We already had a Narcomoeba, so let's discard our entire hand. Narcomoeba enters the battlefield. And now I will cast Ox. I know for sure that my opponent doesn't have Force of Will or Force of Negation. I think they probably have days. So let's exile this, because my opponent gave me a pause there. And we have one mana floating. Oxwalkers enter, Ox Walkers enters the battlefield. Now Ox will also enter the battlefield. The 5 3. Let's find Anger here. Dredge 6. Okay, Anger. And Dredge 6 again. And Dredge 6 again. Multiple bridges, Poxwalkers, and an extra ley line. We can even cast a Dredge return there. It is waiting for us. Let's Cabal Therapy targeting my opponent. I'll sacrifice Ox here so I can cast it again. Or not casting, but a return with a Dredge return. My opponent. Uh, okay, my opponent will try. To slow us down, uh, taking our mountain, so our creatures will not have haste anymore. But we have blockers for Psychic Frog. Let's name these. Oh no, they have Animate Dead and Force of Negation. That's fine. We can take both. I imagine that my opponent will just discard those cards to Psychic Frog. Let's cast my second therapy. Sacrificing Pokeswalkers. Triggers. By being lazy here, I would probably, I should probably just uh, return Ox of Agonas immediately to find our final Pokeswalkers. But this is so... Animate that. This is already a win, guys. My opponent cannot come back from this. Let's just uh, cast Red Return now. Sacrificing both Poxwalkers and uh, Narcomoeba. I don't care. Or we can sacrifice Zombies just to... No. My opponent will never attack with Psychic Frog. Even if they do, they would need something like Removal Spell for Narcomoeba and draw something that will get rid of all my board. And I think this is impossible for a Risk Combinator. They don't have that many answers. Okay, we won. <laughs> this was one of our fastest uh, wins uh, today. You see, I was on top 8, my opponent was the first ranked, uh, but we won. Uh, so let's go to uh, the semifinals. Okay, uh, this is our semifinal. Top 4, starting now. Am I keeping this? We are on the draw. This is probably solid enough to keep. My opponent kept 7, so let's also keep 7. Okay, so my opponent starts with a Flooded Strand, passes. And I'll play Wooded Foothills, Bracket, fetching a Volcanic Island. And let's cast Faithless Doting first. We already have Dredgers. Let's see if my opponent is playing a Control deck. No, or not uh, for this moment. And we discard two Dredgers. And pass the turn. Back to our opponent. They crack Flooded Strand for a Surveil Land. Bring some Zenith. Okay, this can be a Zenith deck, maybe with the Nadu combo. Or maybe just a uh, value 5 colors in it. Okay, they play planes, so this seems burnt. We will dredge. Okay, we even have ox there, but we don't have a double red this game. This is a Cephalic Elysium game. Hopefully my opponent will not have uh, Typho. <laughs> uh, let's crack Cephalic Elysium here. There is an argument for going Burning Inquiry instead, but my opponent is playing blue. So you'll never know if they will have a counter spell. Let's do this uncounterably. Think with imp, dredge 5. And dredge 6. We have Dredge Return. That's great. Bridge. Inquid Imp. Cabal Therapy. Pokes Walkers. So let's discard 
about therapy for sure. We already have two bridges. Am I discarding my third bridge here? Or do I protect bridge? I think I will just discard it. I have Poxwalkers, even if my opponent has something like Solitude to exile or bridges. I think uh, with double Poxwalkers there, we are good to win this. Okay, my opponent is thinking here. Maybe they have an answer. No, Nakomiba enters the battlefield. And now let's sacrifice Nakomiba to cast Cabal Therapy and triggers. Uh, in moments like this, I want... Okay, my opponent is conceding. <laughs> this was... Okay, my opponent is conceding. This was super fast. Uh, I, I'm not sure about what my opponent is playing, but uh, it is a bench deck. I'll submit with one Ashen Rider instead of one Otherworldly Gaze. And I think that's it. We could do more here, but uh, I think uh, I will just change that. I'm feeling some Nadu vibes, and I think... Uh, okay, this is a great kit. Uh, and Ashen Rider sometimes can just uh, force your opponent force your opponent to exile a land or something like that. Okay, my opponent starts with Flooded Strand. Exit for a Tropical Island. Noble Hierarch. Let's draw something good here. Faithless Lutin is one of our best draws. Definitely. Let's see if my opponent can counter a LED. No? So let's play our second one. I think we can... My opponent can have something like Force of Negation, so I think I will slow roll this. They even may have Endurance. So this is so good for a turn to kill. I think I will just cast Faithless Lutin here without cracking LED in response. Of course, maybe my opponent has nothing, only answers like Source of Plowshares or something like that. But, okay, no, no answers for my opponent. And even another LED. So let's play it. Do I go for it? Okay, let's go for it. Let's go for it. We are here to try a turn one win. <laughs> of course, we can lose on the spot, but uh, my opponent maybe, my opponent is maybe playing a combo deck. So, okay, my opponent had Force of Will. They needed to... Can I go for Ox of Agonis here? Unfortunately, I can't. They needed to exile Brainstorm to cast that Force of Fuel. So maybe my opponent didn't want to do that. Maybe Brainstorm was an important card for them. Now they play Basic Island. Brainstorm's in it for two. Uh, is, is this... Oh, Scavenging Elves. Okay. Uh, that's no problem. We can win from here, probably. Yeah. With double LED and Ox in our graveyard, this is already a win. And probably with haste. So let's sacrifice... Uh, better thing. Uh, let's discard our hand and sacrifice LED. Exciting exact 8 cards that we don't need. Ox enters the battlefield. We dredge 6. We dredge 6 again. And we dredge 6 again. We can even cast our second Ox. And we can do this again. With dredge return. We can even uh, have 4 Oxen. <laughs> okay, my opponent concedes. This was super fast. My clock is low not. And now we are on the top 2. I'll meet True Futurism or True Hero. And I already played against both of those players today. They are tied. I hope True Hero wins because I feel like uh, Grixis Delver is a better matchup for us than Eldrazi Post. But uh, let's see who will be in the finals with me. Okay, final round is starting now and we have a rematch against True Futurism with Eldrazi Post. Let me... I'm... I'm... <laughs> uh... I'm writing to him here. Uh, I'm not lie. I was hoping another opponent <laughs> uh, in the finals. Uh, because this is one of our worst matchups ever. But I'm super happy to get until the finals, guys. Now we are on the draw. And my opponent already kept seven cards. Okay, my opponent uh, told me that uh, maybe this is not that bad for me because they don't play with reclaimers anymore. Well, uh, you don't need reclaimers, my friend. I know that we have many other answers. Uh, uh, that are not reclaimers. I will keep this on the draw. Maybe double, double burning inquiry can disrupt my opponent's hand. Okay, my opponent plays only with this tower and pass. Okay, this is super slow. We could have a turn one here, but we don't. <laughs> we we kept a more solid hand. Oh, so double therapy. Unfortunately, we don't have ways to cast this therapy now. We need black mana. So I think I will cast our first burning inquiry here and hope for the best. Okay, my opponent uh, discarded Ulamog, Glimmer Post, and Flute. And we discarded one treasure, and now we have LED and Cephalic Coliseum for next turn. And Anger. So this is not that bad. Of course, my opponent can have multiple answers. They play Planet Nexus and pass. Hmm. Very suspicious. Very, very suspicious. Let's uh, dredge here. Dredge 5. Okay, my opponent stopped on my draw step, and uh, he's probably just searching for something in my graveyard. I feel like they have Puzzlex Command. Maybe uh, Crap Rotation. Okay, let's go for Cephalic Coliseum here. Now what? I think I'll cast Nakomweba here. 
we have double therapy in our graveyard and one therapy in our hand. That pose, guys, that pose is definitely a Lex Command or Crop Rotation. And I feel that uh, this will force my opponent to play something. Yeah? If they cast Crop Rotation here for another land, I will cast about Therapy naming Coslex Command. If they cast Coslex Command, oh, it is Crop Rotation. Okay. So it should be Bojuka Bog. Okay, Bojuka Bog. But this Cabal Therapy is still resolving next turn because we have a third one. It's unfortunate to lose two Cabal Therapies in a single turn because I definitely want to resolve a Therapy here. My opponent plays Urza's Tower, so they have lots of mana. And the Nexus is so busted. It helps so much this, this strategy. Okay, so I will cast Otherworldly Gaze on my upkeep. Luckily, we will find uh, Dredgers or maybe another land. Or both, okay. So I think with Impin Box Walkers into the graveyard. And let's keep Scalding Turn. Because with this, we can even do everything this turn. I can crack Scalding Turn for black mana here. And then I will have seven. If I discard an... If I discard my hand to LED, I will have three cards in my graveyard. So let's see my opponent's hand first, casting this Cabal Therapy. And that's my plan, guys. If my opponent has Kozilek's command here, they have three targets in my graveyard, and I can crack LED in response to cast Otherworldly Gaze with two blue mana. One other blue mana will float to crack Cephalic Collision. And when I cast Otherworldly Gaze, Poxwalkers will enter the battlefield, and Sequid Imp will be dredged by my draw here. So if my opponent has Coslex Command and they do it now, uh, it will be a zero effect uh, for for him. But uh, if if my opponent didn't play, uh, choose to not play uh, Coslex Command, and if he does have Coslex Command in his hand, I would just uh, discard it. My opponent definitely has something, right? Okay, he's tapping for mana because this is so slow. Okay, four mana, one one green. Does he need green mana here? Okay, uh, he's tapping for mana again. Of course, I can be completely wrong, but I will only do my own game plan here, breaking the Cephalic Odysseum, when I have sure that my opponent doesn't have uh, Coslex Command in his hand. My opponent tapped for mana, but he is deeply thinking here. Maybe he saw my line and, and doesn't want to go for it. This is a good spot for us. In this moment, I feel like we can win this game. Okay, they tap for mana again. He taps for mana again. Okay, he's paying for... Was Lex Command? Okay, okay. Let's uh, sacrifice LED, 3 blue mana. He's going for it to force my line, but uh, uh, unless they have something else, uh, we are good here. So, is there an order here? Let's uh, crack uh, Cephalic Odysseum first, because we can find other Pox Walkers, not only this one. So, we'll dredge, dredge, dredge. I misclicked uh, there. I should have uh, clicked uh, Ogar Grip Troll first, but it didn't matter. And now I'll cast Otherworldly Gaze. Oxwalkers enters the battlefield. We found Ox, which is great because we already have Dread Return. We can we can put everything into my graveyard. Okay, my opponent still have three Dread Spawn tokens, and I will name a second copy of Crop Rotation because I think this card is so strong. Okay, nothing, but my opponent has Glacial Chasm. Glacial Chasm. So we will try to win this turn. Let's cast this Cabal Therapy again, so I can have three creatures to return Ox of Agonus to the battlefield. Let's take the Michael's Stowing, Michael's Pawn. Now my opponent has three lands. And guys, I think we will, we will do it. Of course, my opponent can... We, we need to find our last Cabal Therapy here to have enough zombies to win. Because my opponent has blockers. Oh, they can they can sacrifice their own spawns to... Oh, they are not... Uh, he's not doing that. Okay. I think my opponent forgot to sacrifice one Eldra's spawn token. To, so, so I couldn't have that many zombies. They should do that uh, even before that. My opponent is saying Triple Cabal is good. But uh, but uh, two of my Cabal Therapies were exiled. <laughs> yeah, Triple Cabal because one of them uh, was good. Okay, Modo just stopped working here. I'm not sure what is happening. Okay, came back. Uh, we have only nine cards in our deck, but my opponent doesn't have nothing. And if we draw, if we find Cabal Therapy, we can win this turn, right? Maybe I should... Mm. Okay, we have three Narcomi, but everything has haste. But uh, maybe I was too anxious to win here. Because my opponent has a Glacial Chasm. Of course I want to push some damage. But uh, now uh, I should probably wait a little bit on this last draw here. Because we already have Lethal for next turn. But for a moment I thought, okay, if we... Let's see, 15. Yeah, we would have 3 more zombies. This would be Lethal. Of course my opponent could uh, sacrifice one spawn token in response. But okay, I already did this. But just to explain, guys. 
Now I'm giving my opponent the chance to to come back if they draw, I don't know, the one ring, for example. Because okay, they what they are casting? They are tapping for mana, so they are doing uh, he is doing something. Five mana. Because now we have only three cards in our graveyard. So if, if my opponent plays Glacial, Ca Glacial Chasm, uh, they, uh, he can pay two life, two life, two life. So this is exactly lethal for us. We can deal lethal damage to kill our opponents. Actually, uh, his own land can do that. So he needs something else, not only Glacial Chasm here. Okay, they, uh, he has something. They, uh, he had uh, some mana tapping there. But what is this? Not the one ring, please. Not the one ring. Okay, he's playing. He's casting something. Maybe this is another Kozilex command. My opponent wants to take something from my graveyard, but uh, the damage is already done. Okay, he decided to untap everything and just play Glacial Cars, sacrificing Bojuka Bog. And they return Bojuka Bog? No. Only that? Okay. So now we will only draw. LED will not help us. Now we cannot do damage to my opponent. In case you don't know Glacial Chasm, uh, all the damage caused to my opponent is reduced to zero, but uh, it has a cumulative upkeep. So let's play with this box walkers just to send a message. <laughs> My opponent has something. Okay, now he needs to pay two life here. Go into three, down to three. Okay, they, uh, he also has tabernacle. But we can pay to keep two, two creatures here. We can even cast LED. I don't think uh, this will matter. I should have played uh, LED last turn. Okay, so let's box walkers and cabal therapy. We finally found our last cabal therapy, but uh, now it's probably useless. Okay, so Tabernacle is a pain in Magic Online because every trigger triggers twice. And they never... I'm just talking to my opponent here in the chat. Oh, no, let's stop talking and, and play. I, I would say to my opponent here, uh, Tabernacle is so painful to, to play against in Magic Online because uh, it has this uh, double trigger. Okay, so I'm paying zero because my best creatures to keep. I ended misclicking there. I should keep uh, Ox of Agonas and Foxwalkers, of course. Uh, so I just uh, misclicked uh, clicking on several no's from Tabernacle. Uh, but uh, this is probably fine. We will win or lose this game solely on my opponent having some extra way to, to get rid of my lands or my zombies. We have one last turn. My opponent needs to pay two life here. They didn't. Or the tower, okay. Oh, the one ring. Mm. Okay, guys, we cannot win anymore. And my mistake there was to go so deep. Okay, I'm talking to my opponent here. <laughs> uh, my mistake here was going too deep that we don't have time to win the game anymore. But uh, this seems close because my opponent is on 3 life. But uh, with uh, Tabernacle and now the 1 ring, uh, my opponent probably also has uh, Boseju. What? What else? Oh, they still... <laughs> they are forcing me to draw. Target player's cries X, then draws a card. Uh... <laughs> Oh, my opponent is saying, my chat saw that line. So I think my opponent is streaming this. Uh, he, he's, to he's telling me that uh, he didn't saw uh, the line about how to win, how to come back from this game, but uh, his chat uh, in the streaming uh, helped him to find the correct line. Okay, good for him. <laughs> uh, but uh, he, okay, he is also saying that uh, he misplayed uh, on the token. Yeah, because he, he should uh, sacrifice a token, so I... Uh, would not would not have uh, my zombies guys almost there but uh this uh, seems like a close matchup uh, after we okay let's uh let's put here uh we need action rider we need bounce spells we need a little bit of everything right we need to take a little bit of everything from the deck uh this seems like a close matchup this was a close game but uh this wasn't close at all thinking about it i think i sh I, I did the right choice trying to go for the cabal therapy kill there because my opponent was obviously not uh, doing the right uh, calls because we had many zombies, we could uh, have a lethal attack. Uh, but then uh, he saw the line or, or his chat. And now let's focus here. Maybe we can come back from this. But this is, this is miserable. <laughs> I think I will take one basic mountain here to clean the space in the room for more, for more answers. This was fun, but also stressful. Okay, we have an answer to the line and we have other worldly gaze. This is a keep. We have two lands. Uh, this is equivalent of a mulligan to 4 or 5, but a good one. I almost want to mulligan this trying to do something faster. Maybe with Chain of Vapor or other Bounce spell, but also LD Breakthrough and land. <laughs> Let's mulligan here. My opponent kept 7. Let's mulligan again. 
Oh gosh. Okay, we have double answers here. I'm not sure if we need both, especially because we have Kyra's dismissal. And we can also just start with LED discarding Grave Troll, but we need mana to cast Burning Inquiry. My opponent kept seven, guys. This is already so hard. <sighs> I will keep this because we have everything but mana. We have our best answers to Leyline in Kyra's dismissal here. We have even Cabal Therapy, we have LED. I probably should uh, should should kept uh, that hand of seven, but uh, oh yeah, my opponent has ley line because this hand, oh they have two ley lines. Okay, so maybe this is is better than our first hand because now we have cures this missile, but we need two lands. Oh, this match is so miserable. Okay, <laughs> I'm joking here with my opponent. I I asked him uh, want to split the price <laughs> uh, after having two ley lines. Uh, I'll show you guys here. <laughs> uh, he was wondering if I would propose. Uh, this before game one, uh, but my opponent knows that uh, this this match is highly favorable for him. Okay, my opponent plays Bosage, so our LED is good to go. We draw a Golgari Troll. We need to draw two lands in a row to have some chance here. My opponent plays Bojukabok. Okay, it's just showing off at this point. They can uh, he can just uh, uh, just do not uh, hold answers because he has double A line, so he's fine. He's completely fine. Okay, crop rotation. I see. So he's coming for something better than Bujukabok, which is Planet Nexus. Now he has more options than before. Another card rotation, okay. <laughs> uh, we don't have a chance here. Or the Stalver, Planet Nexus card, okay. So we'll never crack this LED, especially because my opponent will force me to sacrifice it, to destroy it. And yeah, that's it, guys. We tried. GG's. Okay. I, I'll tell my opponent that uh, this will be on YouTube uh, tomorrow. I'm telling him this. Uh, I hope you don't mind to be there crushing me twice. <laughs> yeah, we lost twice to the same opponent, but uh, this match is is horrible. We we can improve this. Uh, let's concede here and let's get our second second place prize. We can improve this matchup with uh, some tweaks in our sideboard, but uh, it will always be uh, one of our hardest matchups, if not the hardest. Okay, guys, click the like button, subscribe, leave a comment below if you had some fun with me. Uh, I hope you did. And see you later. Bye.